Hello and welcome back to Vivas. You're still here with myself, Sharita, as well as Daryl. Now, Daryl, I don't know if you caught um, the interview on Vivas last month where we mm -hmm. spoke to Fadli Bakhtia from the Eco Knights as well as Rashwin from BGBG Initiative. They were talking to us about um, the KL Eco Film Festival. So one thing I love to do um, before we start a show is I love getting to know my co-hosts a little bit better. Right. And Daryl, <laughs> a little birdie told me that you are... A previously unknown Leonardo da Vinci sketch has been valued at 15.8 million US dollars after wow. being taken to a French auction house by a retired doctor. Mm -hmm. According to the BBC, the drawing is one of the eight that the Renaissance artist made of the martyred Saint Sebastian. Expert confirmed the work was by da Vinci, who was famously left-handed. Wow. The drawing shows Saint Sebastian tied to a tree with notes and diagrams about light and shadow on the other side. This is very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not cooking is also an incredible practice of mindfulness as cooking and distraction definitely don't go together. Research involving both animals and humans, the study authors found that acute exercise was consistently correlated with improved executive function, which includes mental processes that allow you to plan, focus and multitask, as well as better mood and lower stress levels. Okay, let's start with a little bit of background history. Mm -hmm. Now, over the centuries, feminine hygiene products have seen an evolution that has placed convenience and comfort at the top of its priorities. Unfortunately, as we keep discovering, convenience has a price. Uh, Daryl, are you a fan of pastries? I am. I do love, uh, I do enjoy eating them. Yeah, me yeah. too. I feel like uh, my breakfast is not complete without a nice pastry. Now, you've mm. probably had countless pastries in your lifetime, but have you had a pastry made by a master chef? Well, maybe with a little convincing, we'll get our first guest to bake us a tasty treat. Now, <laughs> Chef Lawrence Chong is better known as Asia's Chocolate Prince for exactly the reason you might think. With over a decade of experience under his belt, he snagged the award for the best chocolate display at the 2015 Coupe du Monde de la Pâtisserie competition in France. We sit down with the chocolate master now for a chat. Anyways, we're not done with desserts just yet. After the break, we speak to one of my favorite chefs that we've mm -hmm. ever had on the show, Chef Lea, so don't go anywhere. Now, all of today's show, we've been dispelling myths and sharing facts with you that you may not have known. So here's another fun fact for you. Field hockey was the third most spectated sport at the 2012 London Olympics. Welcome to VBuzz, Bernice. Thank you. It's so great to have you. Now, I read this one quote in World Literature Today, and it, you know, it said, in the wake of her father's death, a Malaysian author discovers the writer within and ends up writing herself into her country's narrative. And I found that to be mm -hmm. so powerful. Could you share with us what this story was? But say I've already found a mentor. Sure. How do I know if I've chosen the right mentor? Are there any indications to, to show that it's going well? You mm -hmm. might have noticed that in our latest buzz, we were celebrating our Malaysian athletes yeah. who took home a whole bunch of medals at Ooh. the Special Olympics. And it seems Malaysia is on a roll. Mm -hmm. because this probably doesn't compare at all, but when I was in school, I used to run track and like I remember Ooh. Like people would, like I would just feel so sick and so much pressure of everyone watching you. Do you feel yeah. any of those emotions when you're on, on the court? All right, ladies, so here's a topic that's gonna hit home with a lot of us. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point during our lives, we've all been freelancers. Yeah. Now, the Minister of Human Resources, M. Kula Sigurin, is calling for a wider protection in terms of social protection for freelancers in the gig economy. You know, there are a lot of other individuals out there who aren't as savvy as you and you know aren't quite sure what to do. And I think um, as citizens of Malaysia, and we, we have a democratically elected government and it's mm -hmm. within our rights to kind of ask for something that protects us. And now um, freelancers are double the actual population of formal workers. Mm -hmm. So we are a big enough group to start asking for what we want to see in the future in terms of this legislation. Right. I agree there needs to be a strong deterrent, but mm -hmm. I don't think the deterrent needs to lie in such a hard and fast law. I uh -huh. still think it needs to be a little bit loose like it is now so that the judge is able to interpret at their discretion based on a case by case basis. You know, the basic premise of law, the one of the original tenants from 1765, you know, Blackstone's ratio that Rather, ten guilty go free than one innocent suffer wrongly. Right. Well, the law has actually been around for for quite some mm. time now, but it's it's really great that the mm. media is highlighting it because it's always been kind of a gray area where people do it and they don't really know if if it's wrong or if mm. there's legal repercussions. But now that people are talking about it, I guess you know that if you're standing in a parking spot, it is illegal. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever done that before? She is going to make money by giving her fans personalized wishes for a birthday wish or just a shout out. And mm -hmm. she's charging 50 ringgit. I'm talking about Jana Nick. Ah, oh, okay. And I don't know if you guys saw this. This was kind of a buzz in the past couple of days. Mm. Um, and I'm, I don't hate it, mm. but it definitely makes me look at her in a different light. It, right. It, it is a little bit like, you know, you're making all this money. Do you really need more money from mm. your fans? Couldn't you like... Kind of spin it in a more positive way. It's, Maybe it's, take the money for charity. I heard yeah. she bought a Gucci bag with it. Ooh, right. Then it, it hit me that this could just be a clever way to kind of sneak money into the country and make it look like, you know, it, it was came donations. In, it, yeah. A much better one than the one Najib is putting forward. But what do you guys out there think? Would you put your hard-earned money into Najib's solidarity cause or would you rather fund the next sliced bread? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nice. nope. <laughs>